In this demonstration I'll be showing the integration of AUD 2016 with the Intergraph G technology GIS system. I'm starting off in AUD, I'll be pulling features in from GTEC and making some changes to some of those features as they're converted into AUD objects and then sending those changes back and playing them back into uh, the G technology feature tables as the data breaks up into the individual component parts. So I've opened up AUD, I'm in the geographic area I want to work on. First thing I do is go to my data hub tab. I'm going to just run import. Now it's going to prompt me to define the box I want to import data from. So I just draw a box how I want it and then just close the box in the end. So now this is going to go off and, and retrieve data from the G technology database. There's a toolbar at the bottom telling me it's importing GIS features. So while this is running I can show you an overview of the architecture that's occurring. So basically what's happening here is I'm in AUD and I'm making the retrieval of features from the feature tables via feature views using an Oracle FTO and Data Hub is the process that's used to convert from the Oracle G technology schema into AUD features and specifically this is the first step, the one that we're actually running at the moment where the feature tables are in Oracle, features are pulled in, Data Hub which is our configuration process will, will take those objects and convert them between the Oracle G technology schema and the AUD schema so that we end up with AUD objects that we can work against. Okay, so there's our imported features. There's a number of overhead objects, a number of underground objects. I'm going to zoom into a specific area. This is a test circuit that we use for looking at the data and seeing what's in there. There's a whole series of various features, conductors, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and create some new objects and update some existing objects. Here's a pole. And looking at the attributes on the pole. I can see that it's related to a junction and some pole tops various attribution associated with it. It's connected to underground and overhead segments. So I'm going to modify this pole. I'm going to give it a model group because it didn't get the right information when it was pulled in for some reason. Attribution word. I'm going to make it a 50 foot wood pole. Last one. I'll check the status of the object. Existing modified. I'll place another pole now. So I do have a pole on the end there, you might be able to see it's in yellow, kind of hard to see a little bit, but it is there with a new pole, and then I'm going to put a transformer on the end as well. Okay, so there's my new transformer. Status of new on the transformer specify some information in the model group. Yeah, it's a three-phase transformer. And my conductor, I don't want the neutral to be there. There, three phase and my phasing has been defined. Yes, okay, so that's basically gone through the process of doing a very, very simplistic Anyway, so now I've made those changes. It's just validating and resolving my design. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and save. Now I'm just going to run the export process. So it's checking a few things, whether I have a work request link to this drawing, uh, whether I've sent material information to the Storms WMS, telling me it's actually already exported it previously on a certain date and time. Do I want to re-export it? And having completed that, it's now going to go ahead and do the 
next block. Go back to my diagram here. This is the process we're looking at now. Changes are being sent out. They're being converted from the AUD schema back into Oracle uh, FDO objects so they can then be saved into the job tables. And this is basically one of the major parts of the process. When we read data, we read from the feature tables. When we write data in this mode, we're writing into these job tables which hold information about the job in terms of the transactions associated with the job, you know, whether it's an insert, update, or delete, whether it occurs to transformers, poles, conductors, valves, mains, whatever. And now, having checked those changes back in, they're saved in the job tables, and I can then go to the G-Technology client, which is the part where we'll then start to look at the, the objects that have been posted and take those features and play them back in. And I'll just give you a quick overview of that. The final part of the process, which I'll do now in the next video, is I go into G-Technology, open up Job Manager, which then reads data from the job tables and plays those features into the feature tables themselves directly.